Turning to Egypt now, we are seeing reports that the country could be facing dire food shortages soon. A former minister of Morsi's ousted government admitted that they have less than two months worth of wheat. That is far less than previously thought. In the meantime, Morsi supporters vow to continue protesting until he's reinstated. And all this as the interim government calls for the arrests of top Muslim Brotherhood leaders. Fox News' Connor Powell is in Cairo with the latest. Connor, tell us about the scene there. Well, Melissa, this is a country that is still extremely divided. The Muslim Brotherhood is still very angry about what has happened over the course of the last week or so. They are calling for resistance against the military and large protests tomorrow. But in a bit of a shift in tone here, they are now calling for peaceful demonstrations. They've been stressing peaceful for most of this day. They also denounced an attack on a military general here in Egypt in the Sinai. So they seem to be softening their tone. But as I said, this is a country that is still extremely divided. The new transition Additional government is trying to fill out a full cabinet by the end of this weekend, but there's a lot of political wrangling going on, so that is still not a guarantee that that will actually happen. But this is a country that also has a deep economic crisis. As you said, there is a shortage of wheat, according to a former minister. There's also been rolling blackouts and gas line uh, problems here. There are also reports that the country is short on foreign currency reserves, although now several Arab countries have stepped up and are offering some billions of dollars in loans. But this is a country that needs more than loans. It needs a real jump start to its economy here. And that only will happen if they can come together on some type of political consensus here and they're still struggling to form this interim government let alone deal with the anger of the Muslim Brotherhood so dealing with the economy here is a long-term problem but they first have to sort out the politics here and it doesn't appear that the country is any closer to really building a sort of consensus government here which means the economic problems are likely to continue for some long period of time Melissa Connor thanks so much for that report stay safe one thing that is getting better for millions of Egyptians is access to power, electricity, and even gas. It's getting better. Power outages and major fuel shortages were regular occurrences before Morsi's ouster. Suddenly, though, they have inexplicably all stopped. It is causing many Morsi supporters to accuse the military and opposition of conspiring against him from the beginning. But are they right? Zudi Jasser wrote the book, A Battle for the Soul of Islam. He is the president of the American Islamic Forum for Democracy. Great to have you back on the show. You have your doubts about these reports. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, Melissa. I mean, I think Morsi supporters and their apologists here in the, in the West are trying to find something to find an excuse for them to save face and say, oh, it really wasn't their fault. And, you know, the Brotherhood uh, media arm and propagandists are all experts at how to deflect responsibility and make them into victims. The bottom line is, Melissa, as Connor just reported, you, you can't change the reality of Egypt's economy. The fact that that, that minister reports that they only have 500,000 tons of wheat when they should have 10 million. So the $12 billion they're getting from the, the Gulf is actually going to be used to replenish that. You can't change the fact of youth unemployment that was tanking. That's why the tens of millions went into the streets. The textile industry, which was part of the labor movement, was even worse than it was under Mubarak. So all of these issues are really the reality of how the, the Brotherhood not only failed mm -hmm. economically, but politically was a disaster in creating a tyranny of Islamism that the people rejected and the Brotherhood doesn't but want Sudi, to take responsibility. You know, you talk about the folks here in the U.S. that are, are in the media who are sympathetic to the Muslim Brotherhood. It was the New York Times that reported, and, and here it is, sudden improvements in Egypt suggest a campaign to undermine Morsi, the sudden end of crippling energy shortages, and the reemergence of police suggest that those opposed to Mr. Morsi had tried to undermine his administration. That's the New York Times. You think that they're well, I inaccurate? Do you think there's, they're trying to spin the story in the way that's positive for the Muslim Brotherhood? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I mean, there's many uh, examples of stories where the uh, New York Times has uh, basically catered to a lot of Muslim Brotherhood legacy groups in the United States. I mean, our own uh, uh, reports against the uh, or for the NYPD and what they're doing, the New York Times claimed that we Muslims were were simply uh, non-existent and trying to support what the NYPD was doing. So that's a long history. But the New York Times report on this, I think, is just jumping to conclusions. They want to say that the economy's fixed and give the Brotherhood some viability. Why? Because the administration has been, you know, catering to the Brotherhood, has not been critical of them. So yeah. the New York Times is trying to, to bolster that 
terrible State Department moves, terrible White House move, which was a policy that has proven to be on the wrong side of history in Egypt, and now we're having to find some way to save face, not only for the Brotherhood, but for American policy. So the part of the story that you um, dispute is that you don't think there has been a dramatic return to power and energy. And, and in fact, I mean, when Connor Powell came right before you, he was saying that there are rolling blackouts. It sounded like the situation has improved, but not dramatically or overnight. Where, where do we go from here? I mean, how do we get all those things back? Now, does the $12 billion that's ushered, been ushered in the country since Wednesday, that's got to be a step in the right direction? Well, there may be some a little improvement immediately because of consumer confidence. And um, some there was some evidence that people were stockpiling, companies were stockpiling, and now that they see there may be the departure of the Brotherhood, they may have more confidence. But as Connor mentioned, you're only going to get economic improvements when you start to have reinvestments in Egypt. You, you start to see the world start seeing them abandoning Iran and Hamas and other radical groups they were connecting with, and then start to see tourism come back, where the largest, for example, the most economically viable area of Luxor, right. Morsi handed over to a, a Jamaat Islamiya terrorist group. So, you know, this when, when the world sees this change, they will begin to reinvest in Egypt. Political infrastructure of real democracy will start to create a future uh, um, Egyptian economy that will be more successful. Zudi, always a pleasure. Thank you for coming on. Thanks, Melissa. Appreciate it.